that at one time I heard you say you wouldn't live plural marriage if it wasn't your belief and Robin said that and so basically what you're saying said that you would leave if you didn't believe it. Do not twist my words. I'm asking. That's why I'm asking. No. I said if I woke up and I decided this wasn't going to make me happy anymore and this didn't work for me and if I didn't believe this anymore, I would leave. That's right. Do not make me a victim, sweetie. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, November 9th, 2023, and I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. A couple years ago, actually it was very long ago, <laughs> Sister Wives met in Las Vegas with a panel of people. It was the Brown family on one side, and then it was survivors of plural marriage and polygamy sex on another side. And the panel was created to bring a discussion or sort of like a full 360 degree view of what is plural marriage what does it look like on the panel uh the browns were on one side like i said and then on the other side were survivors survivors that represented the apostolic united brethren the flds the kingston group and independent groups that don't necessarily have a whole church and these individuals bravely shared their stories. And one of those people was Kristen Decker. You all know Kristen because I've interviewed her multiple times on this channel. She is the author of 50 Years in Polygamy and she was a staunch advocate for survivors, even helping many women find shelter and safety after leaving the confines of a polygamous relationship. Today, she has kind of retired as her world in, in ag advocacy, but that time on Sister Wives has still caused her a lot of pain, mainly for the way that she was portrayed by TLC and how they decided to make her look like this evil, wicked woman. If you're wondering, Christine and her aunt, Kristen, have not spoken since Christine left the family and they haven't had any discussions. They haven't met anywhere. There's been no contact whatsoever. So while Christine is free from Cody, she has not reconnected with some of the family members that were advocating against polygamy in previous seasons. Kristen shared with me today a story about this episode that I thought I would share with all of you. And in another portion of this video, I wanna show you a lost tell-all where Cody and Mary are asked questions about how Robin joined the family and Robin sharing some information about steps she took when joining the family and Mary actually almost exposing a lie that Cody has told for years and a lie that fans have believed for years. So let's dive into today's topic. Before we do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed, and click on the bell so you never miss a video. When I had a chance to speak to Kristen today, she had revealed that there was aspects of the episode that she participated in, which she said was completed over about three days of filming, that left her still to this day extremely hurt. And in very, in many ways, she said she had a little bit of PTSD because of the way that the editors and the show and the Browns portrayed her as this evil woman that was coming after their family and trying to destroy them. To this day, Kristen still receives nasty emails, messages, and comments on her social media for being a bad aunt of Christine. The reason why I really have no interest in doing this panel, mm -hmm. just really honestly, mm -hmm. um, Kristen Decker being my aunt is really difficult. And doing a panel with her is not safe. It was not an easy decision to become open. And then she comes out and she's fighting me. It's like, I don't need that. I get enough people opposed to what I'm doing. To have it come from family is just hurtful. What were the hurtful things that Kristen was doing? She was writing blogs, writing books, and advocating for victims that 
word leading polygamy, women trapped in polygamy, children trapped in a system where they are considered property, and trying to wake the public up to the atrocities that were happening before their eyes that no one, that people were looking away at, people were ignoring. Just to give you an example of what Kristen was doing, she wrote this on a blog. Every time the public begins to empathize and support polygamy, believing that those glamorous depictions represent that what the polygamous lifestyles are all about, my heart sinks in frustration and sadness, mostly for the women and children. It was and is these kinds of leave the leave them alone attitudes that started in the early 1950s after the Colorado City, Arizona raid on polygamist families. And nowadays, attitudes, oh, those polygamous women are beautiful, so smart, let them be, that unwittingly helps perpetuate the phenomenal polygamous population boom. Most polygamists believe that those of us who have left are adamantly critical of polygamy because we have apostatized from the truth and have become miserable and bitter. That's another threat doled out by leaders and heads of households to persuade their children and the disillusioned to tough it out. The threats that are mingled with the LDS apostasy feel like a way to abandon and mock victims of religious war crimes. Yet we apostates continue to see and hear the heartaches, the wretched stories of our pasts played out in vivid color. They come to us from our daughters, sisters, sons, grandchildren, aunts, relatives, and neighbors, from those who have been threatened since conception with heaven or hell to choose to live polygamy. Joseph Smith promised that we'd be saved in eternities for living the new and everlasting covenant of plural marriage. And for those who abide not that covenant, ye are damned. So suffering women, men, and children keep their mouths shut, distort, make excuses for, and or lie about their feelings. After all, those natural feelings are wicked, defects of character, and must be overcome. They continue, like I did, to teach their children that no matter how miserable, lonely, desperate, poor, deprived, or abused they are or feel, they, are, they must sacrifice their feelings and, lit and lives for the gospel's sake and endure to the end. Kristen would bravely go to the courts and work with victims who were being railroaded and being bullied in court, women that have left trying to seek custody with men who had the power behind their culture, paying for litigation to strip them of custody of their children, deeming them wicked in a court of law. And Kristen was portrayed as an evil, wicked woman on the show. Now, in this specific episode, Kristen mentioned that Robin Brown lied several times. There was a point in time during this episode when she actually seemingly alluded to the fact that they had received threatening messages and basically implying that these messages via text were coming from these polygamists, these victims and survivors, which she said was not true, completely fabricated, and drama for the show. Faith that is faulted, you are weak women, you are a controlling man. All these things that people want to stereotype with the lifestyle. If they say you're a misogynist pig, Cody. I could agree with them. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. In leading up to that scene, they were talking about how family and friends, they ambush them, they send them messages that they are bad people, and then as Robin looks at a phone, she says, they say that you're a misogynist pig, which is nothing that any of those people said. And again, the way that it was attributed on the show made it seem like they had actually said that. So that was something added by producers for the show for drama again. And later in the same episode, Robin and the group sit down at the panel and the panel discussion was a mess. And first and foremost, the victims were so brave to share their stories and the Browns were incredibly insensitive to the pain that these people went through. And at the very end of the episode, which the way it makes it seem is that this whole thing only happened over you know a span of a few minutes. It was an hours of 
discussion that was drilled down to a tiny fraction. But Kristen said that she had asked Robin and Mary a question because in their faith, the idea is that women will only do this, would never share a husband unless it was mandated by their faith. And she wanted them to answer a question, would you do this if you left your faith? Would you do this if you didn't believe? Basically insinuating and implying that the only reason that you're doing this, the only reason that you are being coerced to be a plural wife is because a faith has told you to do this. And she said that Robin got very heated and went off on her for several minutes. And not much of that actually made it to air. And she believes because it would not have painted her well. In fact, the bulk of the hostility that happened at the panel, Kristen said, was not from the anti-polygamists, but rather from the Browns to the victims, which is shocking. But here's a clip of what was said. You wouldn't live plural marriage if it wasn't your belief. And Robin said that. And so basically what you're saying is you just said that you would leave if you didn't believe. Do not twist my words. I'm asking. That's why I'm asking. No. I said if I woke up and I decided this wasn't going to make me happy anymore and this didn't work for me and if I didn't believe this anymore, I would leave. That's right. Do not make me a victim, sweetie. That was a tiny fraction of what Kristen said happened. In fact, she said that the editors cut out the minutes long tirade where Robin berated her, degraded her, and went off on her. And that would not have looked good at Robin, looked good for her to go after a woman who is a victim of this cult that Robin is in. And what I find interesting is what they do show is what Robin, she said, if you didn't believe, you said you would leave. And Robin immediately gets all nasty. And they said, do not make me a victim, sweetie. And then they cut to another section completely unrelated. And apparently Robin just kept going off. But they didn't show that. Imagine you're a victim and an advocate for victims of polygamy. Kristen was a wife, a plural wife, the daughter of a prophet. She was abused as a child and Robin's yelling and screaming at her. Huh, I don't know if yelling and screaming would be a good name, but going off on her publicly. And then producers spinning everything in this episode to make it look like Kristen is wicked, evil, that people are messaging the Browns, calling Cody a misogynist pig, that everyone's attacking them, that nobody's accepting them. And Robin is yelling at a victim and basically saying, I would leave, I would leave if I couldn't, if I didn't believe anymore and if I wasn't happy. Well, Robin, you aren't happy because of everything that's happening. Your husband doesn't believe and has admitted that he doesn't believe. So why are you still there? You said you would leave. Put your money where your mouth is. It to me is just proof that Robin has lied from day one, which gets me to this tell all. So in season three, the Sister Wives wrote a book called Becoming Sister Wives. Natalie Morales sat down with the Sister Wives and interviewed them as a about the book, about revelations of the book. And this tell-all has been scrubbed. I don't know if it's available in other countries, but if you go to Discovery Plus or if you go to TLC, you cannot find the streaming. It's not on HBO either. And I found it on Daily Motion. And in this tell-all, Cody basically calls Christine gross for eating nachos. Janelle and Mary dive deep into their drama. Uh, Cody defends Mary. Janelle acts like Mary is a horrible person because she criticized makeup she was wearing. Takes no responsibility for marrying Mary's husband after being married to Mary's brother. It's just so messy. They admit that they lived with Janelle before when they first got married in the same tell-all. Someone was mentioning that this was not in the series, but it was. And at another point when they started talking about the addition of Robin in the same tell-all, Natalie Morales actually comes for Cody and is like, in the book, you described that you and Mary were in counseling before you added Robin. And wouldn't, and that your, your marriage was at a very dark place 
why then would you have brought Robin into a family with so much chaos going on? And Cody flat out lied and Mary caught him in a lie and stopped it. This doesn't exist on anywhere. Mary called him out so many times on this tell-all. This could be stripped because it doesn't make him look good because he's caught in lies multiple times. Check it out. See, most people would think, again, looking from the outside, at a time where you're going through a struggle in your marriage, and then at the same time, you're starting a new relationship. Yeah, it's crazy, wasn't it? Why did you do that? It's well, crazy. No, we, the, here's the interesting thing is the time, the time gets fuzzy. But Mary and I were literally at a point of an all-time high right before we met Robin. So she says, it's crazy to think that you would add a wife when you're going through such a significant problem in your marriage, when you have all of this other stuff happening. You're in marriage counseling because your other marriage is falling apart and you're just going to add a new relationship to the mix. And even Robin says, it's crazy, isn't it? Because it is. And she, also, she doesn't bring up that he's got a marriage falling apart and he has a wife that's freaking pregnant. He has got Christine pregnant with Truly. Christine also went through a miscarriage right before having her pregnancy with Truly. He had a wife pregnant and he decided, I'm gonna go find a new woman. He had a wife pregnant and he had another wife where he was fighting with her and they were on the verge of getting a divorce. And he's like, I'm gonna add Robin. And then on the show, he's gonna make it seem like Mary pursued Robin. When the truth of the matter is, Robin pursued the family. She wanted to join the family, targeted the family because she wanted to be on reality television. And he put it on Mary, like Mary's the groomer, which isn't fair to Mary. And Mary actually calls him out. So first Natalie calls him out and he goes, no, 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 no. Uh, we were actually in a really good place. The timelines are so fuzzy here. So it, that's not true. We were in a great place. And Mary calls him out. Check it out. When you say we were at an all-time high, we weren't. No, okay. we weren't. I mean, we all were all-time low is what I read. In we the book. were, yeah. we were low. We were having struggles in our relationship. And you went to a marriage counselor along with Cody and Mary. I did. I wanted something between Mary and I, and we got to a place where we can talk to each other. We've all been to counseling together. Yeah. Well, we um, haven't have all we gone done together. All five of us at once. Oh, one time. One time we Listen. did. In the book. Robin describes going to com counseling with Mary as though it was this benevolent decision by her because Cody and Mary were struggling and she wanted to help the two of them together and help bridge the gaps and make sure that she and Mary could have a good relationship if she were to enter the family. This family was in such disarray and you will never make me believe that Mary wanted to add Robin to the family because she's going to counseling with Robin before Robin even joins. Why on earth were you going to counseling with a woman that you're claiming is, I'm going to bring her into the family. We really want this. No, Cody wanted Robin in the family. Cody was going to make it look like Mary wanted her in the family. Mary and Cody's relationship is falling apart. Cody is bringing Robin into an impossible situation and Robin is willingly going into an impossible situation, full force. What is she thinking? Robin had three children, three kids, three kids, three minor children that she was supposed to be worried about their safety. And she's going to therapy and Mary's saying, no, we're not in therapy because things are good. We're in therapy because this marriage is a mess. We're not getting along. We're on the verge of divorce. This was alluded to on the show. It's alluded to in the book, but they never talk about it. And this is the only time it's ever addressed in a tell-all that is literally gone from the internet. And Mary says, no, we were not at an all-time high. Co Cody tried to make it seem like they were in a great situation as soon as Robin was there. It was a great time to add Robin. Really, Cody? If things were so great, why are you in therapy with Mary and Robin? It makes it seem to me like there were issues with Mary and Robin. 
prior to Robin even coming into the family. Things are so dire in this family that Mary and Robin are in counseling before Mary, before Robin ever even spiritually marries Cody. And then they go on to a television show and make it seem like everyone's best friends. And this again is scrubbed from the internet. It's only on Daily Motion. You won't find it on TLC. You're not gonna find it on Discovery. At least Mary had the wherewithal even back then to tell the truth. And even Christine said, no, we never went to counseling with y'all one time. So not only did they hide Robin's addition to the family from Janelle and Christine, but things were not good between Mary and Cody and things were not good between Mary and Robin. And Robin went to counseling with them and still decided to join the family when bring her three minor children into this mess of a family. Why? Because she wanted to be on a reality show. Robin, that situation should have been your damn red flag to leave. That should have been an indication from the jump that this was not a good situ situation. And for anyone to say that Robin caused the problems in this family, no, it's clear Cody caused all the problems. And it's also clear that the family was in shambles before Robin. And this was a disaster and a time bomb waiting to explode. I'm just surprised it took this long, but I shouldn't be surprised because they were making a lot of money on the show, playing up to all of these lies and Cody became a millionaire. I mean, I don't think he has millions now, but you know what I'm saying. Why does TLC hide this kind of stuff? So they hide the stuff with Robin going off on Kristen. They make it look like Kristen's wicked and evil because she's left polygamy. And then they hide these tell-alls that actually show a side of Cody getting caught in lies, Mary catching him in lies, other wives catching him in lies, and admissions of, yeah, we were all in therapy before Robin even joined. Because none of that, in my opinion, fits the narrative that they were one big happy family. And it also would reinforce this idea that bringing Robin into the family blew up the family. And they didn't want that out there. At least that's not what I think. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.